Okay, Miss Roll, you want to give? Okay. <coughs> Miss Roll, I know you have done this play before. How many times have you done it? Really, just once. The Los Angeles. Yeah, I understood it um, in the Broadway production. But um, I really only did the play in Los Angeles. Who did the Broadway production? Uh, Miss Martin was a part of the Broadway uh, production, and so was Ms. Miss Moore. Um, B. Richards, Frank Silvera, Whitman Mayo, Art Evans, and some other people from California that I did not know I had met before. When was the play first produced? Oh, I don't remember years. What year was that, Helen? Was it? 60. I don't keep up with years. In the 60s, mid 60s, yeah, could we yeah. say? Mid 60s. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. I'll, I'll just work that into the commentary. Uh, okay. Um, the. Um, uh, Having you here for this production at the Dallas Theater Center, of course, has attracted a lot of attention because you two are who you are, and the play is James Baldwin, and the Dallas Theater Center has a reputation for doing really fine theater. Uh, but I'd like to ask you, Ms. Roll, what do you think is the overall appeal of this play? Mm, I think it's a classic. Um, It is purely an ethnic play. It is a play where people can learn about other people, interrelate with other people, because um, Baldwin has written a play uh, as he knew it in a little church somewhere, USA. Black Church, USA. And there is such a warm, familiar mm, flavor to it that all people can relate to. It's amazing when you, when, uh, you watch people in the audience amening as if they were in church or if they were invited to bow their heads and pray, they bow their heads. Some of them even offered to, um, wanted to put up a, a collection in the plate when we passed the plate around. It's that kind of play that, uh, then it also has um, overtones of um, family struggles. Uh, I think Sister Margaret is a, very much misunderstood person by her own making. I think she put herself into this position. And she becomes a rather pathetic, I think. It's a good play because it reminds me of all the old people I ever knew when I was going to church and watching them and listening to them. It's so familiar. And it makes it very comfortable. Where did you grow up? In Florida, Pompano Where? Beach, Florida. Oh, yes, yes, OK. Nowadays, um, and for some years, actually, television has been able to get mass audiences for all black or predominantly black uh, Television has always, or at least for some years, Ms. Roll, been able to get mass audiences for predominantly black casts and, and black stories. Um, Bill Cosby now is, you know, the, is the, the case, uh, the, the prime example. But why is it that it seems to me the theater has always had to fight to get that mass audience and what they call the crossover audience? Why is that? Well, it's rather simple. The cost is high, 
and the um, work is so much more. If I were to do a television show, I'd make 90 times the amount of money I could make on the stage, and I won't have to do half the work because I've got an engineer to see that my voice is right. I've got a lighting person to keep up with where my lights are, and somebody is marking the floor every minute of the way. They say, stand right here, stand right there. So what do you have to do? <laughs> you have well, very few words to learn. You learn your little, in a play, you've got a whole script to learn. And once the curtain goes up, there is no technician helping you. No one can help you. What your audience sees is what you get. Therefore, it uh, has a different I think it's almost also more satisfying to the audience than in, than uh, television. I'm sure it is to the artist, but I think the audience enjoys it more. They feel they've had a touch of reality when they see a stage play. Unfortunately, the cost of an audience seeing a play is so high. Broadway is just barely hanging on because the tickets are so high. By the time you pay a babysitter, have dinner, a drink, see the play, you're out a good $150. And how many people can afford that? I'm so glad that this play is being done here by Virginia Black uh, Academy in um, circumstances where the people, the masses, can come and see it. At $10, they can afford to come. I hope they recognize what Mr. King is trying to do and support it fully so that he won't have to work so hard the next time. But I hope he's going to garner an audience, a large audience, who develop a taste and will not lose that taste for theater. I think people need theater. Theater is badly needed, especially so among blacks. Whites have had theater, well, they haven't really had theater longer than us because when it was white, it was black performers in the beginning uh, because it was a very lowly occupation. And uh, blacks were doing the performing when blacks couldn't go into the theater. But I would like to see more black theater uh, being presented to the masses because contrary to what many people think, uh, theater is not simply entertainment. Theater is history. The only way our children are going to know what our grandparents looked like, dressed like, spoke like, is through the theater. Theater preserves culture in its entirety. That, I think, is one of the reasons that Shakespeare is still very important. It captures a part of the flavor of the life of the, that time. And when we can preserve so that children 15 years old wouldn't look around and say, who is Martin Luther King? I don't know. See the statue and say, who is that? I don't know, that's a man. They should know. I mean, everybody knows who King Henry VIII was. And he was here so many centuries ago. But you've got an idea how they ate, how they dressed, and the political behavior of the people. This is what I think is so important that we get to our young people, that preservation of that part of our culture. 
that isn't necessarily being uh, preserved by the majority society. And it is our responsibility to do it, I feel. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Okay. I couldn't get it on. Really? On, oh, I can't what? get that on my television. Oh, really? Mm -mm. It's all... Oh. Well, mine wasn't very clear. In fact, I found that older one is not Oh, well, I wish it. I could have seen it, because when all the time I was trying to turn to eight, it's all, I can only get 11, 2, 4, and 5. Oh. Sometimes 13, 2 goes off. Until yeah, you're not on the cable then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what, what is he doing? I can't see. No, but, it's what I was doing. Oh, was he giving you directions again? Yeah, he was. He just decided to wait until I got oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> Now, see, he, he doesn't wait for me, he, you know, he's Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Those are pretty colors in that. Thank you. I, I must admit, I bought it for the colors. And whenever I wear it on television, the crews always say, oh, we love that because we get beautiful color right. registration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody that understand what the play is about? Yeah. And everybody has a family problem, and everybody got some little mm -hmm. neighborly problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's not going to be any problem in understanding the play. Yeah. Uh, perhaps if it were in uh, some foreign country, uh, maybe in jolly old England, <laughs> they may not know about this type of religious church because they were basically Catholic and then Anglican. Yeah. But um, the kind of religion that uh, Roger Williams and um, what's that other one name brought over here. The Martin, Martin, uh, mm -hmm. Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. I guess he was one of them. Um, was a straying from the uh, pompous uh, uh, pageantry of Catholic and uh, Episcopalian yeah. churches. Yeah. And um, they started to shout in the, and it became uh, blacks embellished on it because it became their um, private language where they could communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. And okay. like we always do, we can put more frills on anything. <laughs> <laughs> we can dress up a piece mm -hmm. of bacon, you sway that idea. <laughs> I wish, will you teach me? <laughs> But it's true, <laughs> it is so colorful. We can dress up it. anything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you take the fact that you don't have but so much to buy clothes with, then you get a certain wall to go with it, you know, that make it all right, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> and I love to, I was talking to my Angela the other day, and um, we were complimenting each other on something. I said, yes. And she said, girl, I had an expression the other day that almost killed me. There's this old lady, elderly lady, who looks well, dresses well, and is just enjoying life. Passed by, she said, hi, you know, they speak every time they see each other. Well, this morning she was looking particularly good and was doing a little strut. And uh, Maya said, she said, hello, Miss Jones, you're looking so good today. And she looked at her, you said it. She <laughs> 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 said, you know, beautiful. <laughs> Maya said, I just felt Oh, and she I had heard that since I heard my grandmother say it. <laughs> It's still just the same thing. Thank you. you. Uh -huh. It's like, I didn't brag about it, it wasn't me. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's those little tidbits that, yeah, <laughs> that just come so natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's people watching, isn't it? That's people yeah. watching. 
Yeah. Big name stuff in to finance the walls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's what brings the dollars in. That's right. Okay. We're rolling. What is the broad appeal of this play? Okay. What are some of the things that you think audiences especially relate to in this play? Okay. What are some of the scenes audiences, all audiences, especially relate to? Why is it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Making sure my page was working. Okay. Okay. Why is it more difficult for the theater to get a crossover audience than television? Mm 